What's up, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda in my basement, uh, right next to my sump pump. And the reason I'm down here is because actually my watchdog finally bit the dust, and so my backup pump is now out. Uh, my primary pump is still running, but you know, given that my backup pump failed, you know, it kind of makes me a little uneasy about how long that uh, main pump is going to run. So I got a new pump. I'm going to show that to you here because it's pretty innovative. And I think if you've got a sump pump, this might be something you want to check out. And if you have a main pump that's still running, even though it's a bit old, you can sometimes just pull that out and keep it. So I'm going to keep it kind of on standby as my backup to my new main and my new backup. Uh, you know, just in case something catastrophic happens and I can drop it in, especially once it's all set up with the PVC pipe and, and couplings and whatnot. You can probably swap that thing in like, honestly, in like five or six minutes. So let's take a look at the new one. And here it is, man, it's a Wayne. So this is actually gonna be replacing my existing pump, which I don't have a Wayne. Never have tried them, but the reviews seem pretty good on this. Now I wanna show you this because it's pretty interesting here. I had a choice replace my main pump, which is gonna be a couple hundred bucks for a new pump, uh, replace my backup pump, which is also gonna be a couple hundred bucks, or get this, which is a sump pump and backup system built into one. And in fact, if this thing works well and is decently reliable, uh, I think this is maybe the only way to go. So instead of replacing both of those separately and spending $400, I spent about $450 to get this little bad boy here. But really what it seems like is there's two different float check switches, float valve switches, and there are two separate pumps and two different check valves, but they all really just flow into a single pipe. So really this is has all the redundancy of any kind of two pump system. The only thing that is really different is that they flow into that same you know um, exit pipe. And so you actually only need one pipe. Right now I have two one and a half inch PVC pipes, but this allows me to only have one. And uh, it's very unlikely that you're gonna have a physical failure on that. Now you will need a battery, which I'm gonna reuse for my watchdog. So the battery is still good. The, um, just the switch and the pump have failed. But uh, let's go ahead and unbox this sucker and take a closer look. So I've unpacked everything and that actually was pretty simple. And it just kind of at first blush, taking a quick glance through the instructions here, I think I'm gonna really like putting this thing together because it's actually uh, pretty easy. First of all, let's take a look at the battery box. So this is what it comes with. You use kind of a standard deep, cycle battery and we've got some plastic or paper in here um, here is the uh, AC connector so you plug it in and that's how the battery continues to get charged I, I love the fact that it comes with the box and these uh, battery tenders basically and switches are much smaller much simpler than when I first bought it you can see the fuse in there we have a couple connectors to connect it to the battery we have all the connectors to connect it to the pump and the switches and then on the top here you have uh, just some LED lights, low, medium, full charge, power failure, and there should be um, an alarm in here too. So when it goes on backup power, it should start squawking at you. Now, here's the pump. This is probably what you've been uh, all wondering what it looks like, and I've taken a look here, and it's a nice compact design. You will have to have a 15 and a half inch sump pit width um, and 22 inches deep which i think should fit mine thing is pretty heavy I, I see we have some cast iron hardware especially on the bottom now uh, the only things that i think i need to point out and the only assembly we need to do is really the float but i just want to want to show you first of all this side uh and i hope this is like a handle here but this side is the main pump and you can see they almost look identical so they're pretty robust pumps and, and obviously pretty heavy um down here, right here is where we'll have our check valve, I believe, on it. And right here is the float and the hanger. Now, reading the instructions, I kind of figured out what you need to do. You have to actually run the uh, hanger through here, this little hole on this rubber tab. That's going to hold this in here. There's a little tapered end here that should hold that in. So you're gonna wanna pop that through there, um, put the float on here, which is like a polystyrene. And then up here on the top on the arm, you're just gonna wanna put this in through there like this. And that's really just going to have the allow the float to push up on this arm so it knows when it's high, and then pull down on it and turn off the pump. So that's your main pump there. Um, and as you can see, it kicks up into this uh, 45 degree angle, one half inch pipe, and then they merge up here. Now I'm not sure if I have to drill an air release hole on my main pipe yet, but your one and a half inch PVC should go in here and then I'm just gonna use a little PVC glue and cement. 
as proof on that check valve, I think you can actually see it down there at the bottom. So, looks like a little cover and it's hinged on one side. So it's there. Now, here's the other pump and you might be saying, all right, it looks almost exactly the same, which gives me a lot of confidence that this uh, Wayne pump is going to work, but uh, there's a little bit of a difference here. So the connections are different, right? This one has just a regular three prong grounded uh, wall outlet plug because this is going to go into the wall and I guess the switch for turning it on and off is kind of internal to the pump which is actually a little bit different if you get kind of one of these like external switches which is what I currently have but this looks like it's all controlled inside so it's a little smarter now the power to this looks about the same but it's actually one of these plugs and that's going to plug into your cap right here then it has kind of what you might see even in your permanent setup a separate float switch here and so you can see it's um, housed in here and I can probably pull this off and you can see it's kind of one of those standard plunger float switches uh, this allows things to not interfere with it this little covering here this is your backup so this is why the float switch is higher than the main float switch because this is only going to trigger this pump if this one isn't working and the water rises on here too we have a separate power piece again plugs into the unit there so you're gonna have both of these plugged into this over there. You're gonna have this plugged directly into your wall and that should be it. So really taking out the old pump is probably gonna be the hardest part. Have a separate pump or bail the water or do it on a day when the water isn't pouring in. But really I just need to cut some PVC pipe that will fit this uh, to my check valve and my exit pipe and then really just drop this in and start plugging it in. So let's do that and see if we can get the sucker to work. All right, so I've got the pump physically in. I don't have any of the backup plugged in yet, but I do have the something I'm filling with water here. So I wanna just kind of plug in the pump and see if this works, even without the backup yet installed and just empty some of the water out if possible. And there she goes, and man, She's pretty quiet, holy smokes. Uh, it advertises itself as quiet, and I would say it lives up to that building. You can hear the water dripping in there, and that's really the only thing making the noise, and the water level is going down. Pretty awesome. Let's get the backup stuff hooked up. All right, so I have everything set up here on the backup pump too, and actually when it was all just on battery power, it, all, it said power failure, and this little red LED came on. As you can see here, it's telling me the battery is fully charged and everything is connected. I will say that the connectors that they include on the wires here are too small for my posts. My posts are too big, and since I didn't have any adapters, what I did is I just went ahead and uh, snipped the, uh, the opening so that it would fit around the post. Um, it only was on the positive side here, so it's crimped down by that wing nut. And as you can see, everything is plugged in here and should be working out. <laughs> the other thing I did was I actually unplugged the main pump here because I wanted to see if the backup pump would actually kick on. So we've got water filling up here. It's gonna be a little while longer here till we get to that uh, float switch right there, but I might accelerate it by adding a little water to the mix here and see if we can just confirm that the backup pump does work and that we get the alarm, hopefully. All right, so the backup pump looks like it went on and I got an audible alarm right here. And as you can see, the water level is going down even though I'm adding some auxiliary water there. It's going all the way down the bottom. So that is sweet. That is absolutely sweet. Uh, I would have actually liked that alarm to keep going off and keep warning me, but I guess that since it's on uh, AC power, it's probably not going to continue. But so far, man, I love this thing. Uh, this Wayne dual pump system is awesome. It's super easy to install. Everything goes through a single pipe here. And man, I'm glad I got it. I feel better about it too. And it's no more expensive than buying the two pumps individually. I'll put a link to it in the description. I picked this one up on Amazon. Peter Von Panda out.